Hey friends of Keyclock, nice to see you again. This is Des Nico. Today I want to talk about Keyclock Realms, what they really are and if it's a good fit to use them for multi-tenancy in Keyclock. So grab a coffee, make yourself comfortable and then let's start. In my daily business, giving advice and consultancy to a various bunch of companies, I recognize realms are the most misunderstood concept in Keycloak. So many of them are software as a service co uh, companies and they want to use realms for uh, using a discriminator for multi-tenancy so that you have distinct tenants on your Keycloak system. But what is a realm really in Keycloak? So a realm is level of isolation in Keycloak. There's nothing in between two realms. No users, no clients, no settings. In fact, Keycloak is not an identity provider, but Keycloak is a provider of identity providers because each realm is a separate identity provider on itself. And there's nothing in between two realms. A user from realm A cannot access clients configured in realm B and vice versa. So it's not on running one identity provider, one Keycloak server and having multi-tenants on one identity provider. Because if you run multiple realms, you're actually running multiple identity providers. And from my understanding, Keycloak was never originally designed for providing multi-tenancy to companies. Keycloak was originally designed, from my understanding, my opinion, for usage in one company internally where not too many distinct user and client areas are provided. So if you want to run Keycloak in your environment with uh, different tenants in your software service environment where you have a various bunch of tenants, uh, then in my opinion you have three options and some trade-offs to deal with and you have to decide which option hurts you less. So let's dig into the three options. So one option may be to not to use realms at all as your tenants. Just throw all your clients, users and customers in one realm and use um, attribute at the user or use a user group for a discriminator as your tenant. This makes it hard for, for example, if you have tenant administrators, which should be able to manage only their own users because uh, that's not possible out of the box in Keycloak. Uh, yes, there are the fine-grained admin permissions, but um, they're still preview. And from my experience, they, uh, they, they, doesn't, they don't work as, as expected. And um, I, I don't get it how to configure it so that um, a tenant administrator can only manage the users from, from one group, for example. And uh, yeah, it's still a preview and uh, perhaps something will change in future. Um, there are other uh, third-party uh, extensions on the market from uh, the community, from other companies providing some kind of, of a company structure and uh, making heavy use of the Keycloak SPI mechanism to uh, give further functionality, further structure to Keycloak so that you can run a multi-tenancy environment in just one realm. But that's a third party extension from some other vendors, some other providers, and you're, you're bound to, to these um, offerings uh, that they keep up with the release caden uh, cadence of uh, Keycloak itself. The second option may be to have a distinct realm for each tenant. This is the best separation of, of your user's data itself. But uh, as you run multiple tenants, you have to configure your client or your clients in each tenant. And all of your clients have to be able to, uh, to handle multiple uh, identity providers, like multiple um, realm URLs. Uh, remember, each realm is an own identity provider, a distinct identity provider, and each identity provider has an has a uh, separate issuer URI, and so has each realm a separate issuer URI. And um, in this case, if you have a distinct realm for each tenant, 
your clients have to deal with uh, all the uh, ID identity provider URLs. And if you um, get a new customer, a new tenant, you have to extend your environment uh, to a new realm and you have to provide this data of the new realm of the new identity provider to your clients. And your clients um, have to be able to, to load this data on the fly so that there's no downtime if you want don't want to have uh, some downtime. But from the separation of data uh, point of view, having a distinct uh, realm per uh, tenant is the best uh, approach. So also each tenant administrator is able to just maintain only their own users because um, yeah, the tenant administrator is only able to authenticate to uh, this concrete uh, tenant realm. The third and last but not least option you have in running, uh, running multi-tenancy with Keycloak is a mixture between the first and the, the second option. So running uh, a distinct realm for each tenant and also having a, a common realm for your applications, for your clients. And uh, having this application realm is identity brokering to your tenant realms. So your clients are just uh, communicating, dealing with the application realm, the common realm, and uh, your users uh, start using your, your clients and the client is redirecting to uh, the, the realm login page on the um, common realm. There we have a button or with uh, automatic uh, forwarding to your uh, concrete tenant realm. The user is authenticating at the tenant realm, is redirected back to the common realm and from the common realm to the application itself. So with this approach, you have um, the clear separation of users data and the tenant administrators are able to manage their own tenant users only. And your clients um, only have to deal with one uh, identity provider URL. And uh, there are still some libraries out there which don't provide uh, tenancy in um, using uh, various multiple uh, URLs from IDPs. Um, from my experience, uh, Quarkus does um, support this and also um, Spring Security does support having multiple um, IDP URIs, uh, but not all the, the libraries out there supporting this. And um, if you have an environment where you can only use one URI for an identity provider, this may be a, a good fit. But uh, the downside of this approach is that you're duplicating a resource and you, a resource allocation. So when brokering from the common realm to uh, the um, tenant realm, the user authenticates at the tenant realm and the tenant realm a session will be started and created and held in memory and also a user will be created in the common realm and the session for this user will be created also in the common realm so you have two user sessions in your environment and uh, two user sessions are um, meaning having um, memory allocation for two users and also additionally you have duplicated the user's data on, on uh, your storage. The users originated from the tenant realm and perhaps it will be managed in the tenant realm, the data will change in the tenant realm, but the user's data is copied to the common realm. And uh, then you have to take care about these copied data in the common realm whether we have to update it regularly or we have to delete it uh, after usage, after logging out. And all this stuff um, is not possible out of the box without uh, any custom extensions in Keycloak. So if you want to run this uh, approach, you just have to implement something custom, some custom event listeners, some custom authenticators or whatever to manage your duplicated data. Now, hopefully, you have a, a basic idea and basic understanding what realms are and what they're not, and how you can use them uh, for multi-tenancy, or if you don't like it, 
don't use it for multi-tenancy. Depends on your use case. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video and if so, don't forget to give me some thumbs up, subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos and uh, yeah, see you next time here on YouTube. Bye bye!